operational amplifiers. Unlike basic components like resistors, capacitors, diodes, or transistors, op amps are actually circuits made from these building blocks. They're not just one component, they're a whole mini circuit all packed into a tiny chip. Op amps are manufactured as integrated circuits, or ICs, making them easy to use and incredibly versatile. And despite being built from other parts, they've become one of the core building blocks of analog electronics in their own right. So what exactly is an op amp? The name gives you the clue. Op stands for operational, and amp is short for amplifier. And what's an amplifier? It's a circuit that takes a small, weak electrical signal and makes it bigger. It multiplies the signal's strength, so the output is a much stronger version of the same thing. Most signals in electronics start out pretty weak, so they need a boost before they can be processed, sent somewhere, or used to drive a device. Think about a simple audio setup. A microphone turns your voice into an electrical signal, and a speaker turns it back into sound. But here's the catch. The mic's signal is far too weak to drive the speaker directly. That's where an amplifier comes in. It strengthens the signal so it's powerful enough to be useful. Its main job is to increase the voltage without distorting the shape or quality of the signal. And amplifiers aren't as intimidating as they sound. In fact, even a single transistor can be wired up to work as a basic amplifier. So what makes an operational amplifier so special? Well, unlike a regular amplifier that just makes a signal bigger, an op amp can also do math using voltages. Here's an example. Imagine you've got three containers of water, each at a different temperature, and you want to know the average temperature automatically, in real time. How would you do it? You could start by putting a temperature sensor in each container. Each sensor gives you a voltage that's proportional to the temperature. Now, the question is, how do we get the average of those three voltages? Sure, you could grab an Arduino and write some code to do the math, but honestly, that's overkill. It's like bringing a bulldozer to plant a flower. You'll get the job done, but most of the machine's power will go unused. Instead, you can build a simple analog circuit with just a few resistors, transistors, and maybe a capacitor. This little circuit will automatically produce a voltage that represents the average of the three inputs. From that, you can easily figure out the average temperature. No programming, no debugging, no maintenance. And it doesn't stop at averaging. Engineers have built analog circuits that can do all kinds of math using nothing but voltages. They can add, subtract, scale, differentiate, integrate, and that's just the beginning. Here's the cool part. Although these operations sound very different, the heart of the circuit is often the same. Change a few resistor values, maybe swap one of two components, and boom, it's doing a completely different calculation. That got engineers thinking. Why not take this flexible building block, fine tune it, and package it into one component? A single chip that can perform all these operations with just a handful of external parts. And that's how the operational amplifier was born. Op amps are circuits designed to do math with voltage, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, even differentiating and integrating, not just amplifying signals. They're called operational amplifiers because they were originally built to perform these operations, not just boost signals. Like any amplifier, you could build one from scratch using resistors, capacitors, and transistors, or even old-school vacuum tubes, but that's slow, fiddly work. To save time, manufacturers package op amps as integrated circuits, or ICs, so everything's ready to use inside one tiny chip. Instead of showing all the internal parts, we use a simple triangle symbol to represent an op amp. Clear, universal, and easy to draw. Since most projects need more than one, op amps are often sold in pairs or groups of four. One of the most common is the 8-pin dual op amp package, pretty much the closest thing you'll find to a standard. And the best part? They're incredibly cheap. You can buy dozens for less than the cost of a coffee. A single op amp has two inputs and one output, 
One is the inverting input, marked with a minus sign, and the other is the non-inverting input, marked with a plus sign. To power the op amp, we use a dual rail DC supply, which provides both positive and negative voltages. Typically, that might be plus 5 to plus 15 volts on the positive side and minus 5 to minus 15 volts on the negative side. This setup lets the output swing both above and below 0 volts. There are a few key things to know when working with op amps. First, op amps don't draw current from their inputs, so they won't disturb sensors or other delicate circuits they're connected to. In reality, there's a tiny leakage current, but it's usually so small it doesn't matter. On the output side, an op amp can send or receive current and drive loads with very little voltage loss, thanks to its low output impedance. Now for the most important feature of all, gain. The name amplifier is used because it boosts the input voltage. More precisely, an op amp amplifies the difference between its two inputs. That gain tells you how much bigger the output will be compared to that voltage difference. For example, if the inverting input is V1, the non-inverting input is V2, and the output is V3, then the op amp amplifies V2 minus V1 to produce V3. This gain is central to how op amps work, and it changes depending on how we use them in a circuit. Op amps are usually used in one of two main configurations, open loop or closed loop. In open loop mode, there's no feedback path from the output to the input. The gain here is enormous, anywhere from 100,000 to over a million. But that doesn't mean one volt in will give you millions of volts out. It means that even the tiniest difference between the inputs will slam the output to one extreme or the other, right up to the positive or negative supply voltage. That's why open loop is mainly used in voltage comparators, where the job is simply to detect which input is higher. We'll get into those in more detail later. Most of the time, though, we use op amps in closed loop mode, specifically with negative feedback. This is when the output is fed back to one of the inputs, usually through a network of resistors. Negative feedback tames the gain, keeps the circuit stable, and makes the op amp respond in a predictable linear way. Closed loop designs are used in all sorts of circuits, like inverting and non-inverting amplifiers, summing amps, difference amps, integrators, and differentiators. Before we get into applications, there are two simple but powerful rules for analyzing op amps with negative feedback. They're called the golden rules, and they come from the ideal behavior of an op amp. Golden rule one, no current flows into the input terminals. This is because an ideal op amp has infinite input impedance. Golden rule two, the voltages at the inverting and non-inverting inputs are equal. With negative feedback, the op amp constantly adjusts its output to make the voltage difference between the inputs as close to zero as possible. These rules only apply when there's negative feedback, but when there is, they make predicting how the circuit will behave incredibly easy. So far, we've covered the key characteristics and golden rules of op amps. In the next video, we'll put them into action, building practical circuits like comparators, buffers, and amplifiers. With just a few resistors and capacitors, you'll see how one tiny op amp can become a powerful, versatile tool for your electronics projects. So be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss it.